Pew, 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 pew. What is up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Saturday, Weapon Ray. Uh, so I know it's not Saturday. It is Sunday. Uh, but for whatever reason, I was having issues uploading uh, this video yesterday. So I just ended up reshooting it, and I'm just going to put it up today. So Saturday, Sunday, apparently. Um, so this is something that I've already talked about. This is a revisited gun, but uh, it was actually the third episode of Saturday Weapon Ray. But the lighting was really crappy. I had a completely different setup. Um, so we're just going to uh, try this again with better lighting and just this over overhead setup. Hopefully it's going to be a lot better for you guys. Um, so as you can see, uh, this is the iconic Steyr AUG. This is a Steyr. Um, it was built here in the United States from, from a, a satellite factory, so this was, is not an import, um, but this is an actual Steyr AUG or Steyr AUG. This is the A3M1. Uh, this is the NATO version. So there is a standard version, and the standard version will come with their own proprietary magazines. Uh, and then it will also have the option of both a right side ejecting and a left side ejecting port here. And then also over here, as you can see, uh, this is a mag release, but on the standard version, uh, it's actually a uh, bolt release would be here. Uh, so the NATO version, uh, the only difference is, is that, again, this is a mag release instead of a bolt release or bolt catch. And this takes AR-15 mags instead of uh, only being able to accept the their own Steyr AUG proprietary mags. And then, it, obviously, again, uh, this port on this side is closed off. So it's for a right-hander. You can get it for left with NATO, uh, but I got it for right, so that's going to be the differences there. Uh, this is in their uh, NATO uh, uh, OD green I went with, but you can get white black, the mud color. Um, so little background on the Steyr AUG, developed in 1977 for the Austrian military, um, has been picked up by other militaries around the world, uh, Ireland being one of them, Australia being another. There's, I think there's a couple other nations that have uh, adopted the Steyr AUG as their military's primary weapon. Um, I can't recall those other countries at this time. It is still being used today, so it has uh, been proven worthy and effective. This is arguably the most iconic bullpup style rifle out there. Uh, in my opinion, it still is one of the best, even though this gun is now over 40 years old. Um, I have another uh, bullpup style rifle. I've shot a couple other bullpup style rifles. I really like this one. It's not perfect, and we're going to get into that, but I think... For the time, they did a lot of stuff right. Um, so <laughs> up here, uh, they have their own proprietary uh, flash hider slash compensator. There are five ports here. Uh, there's nothing on the bottom. So the gases are just being pushed out to the side and on top. So not only is it going to help reduce and mitigate recoil, but it's also going to help suppress that flash at the end of the uh, muzzle as well. Uh, moving back, they have a short stroke adjustable gas system here. So here's the gas port right here, and you can adjust this. So if you wanted to run this suppressed, you can, and you can easily adjust it using uh, this port right here. Uh, going back, um, they've got a little five or six spot uh, slot Picatinny offset mount here, and then they've got a 16 slot Picatinny rail up top. Uh, on their websites, you can pick if you want a full size or a shortened uh, pick rail up top. They do have, again, their own built-in vertical grip here. So in order to activate it, you pull forward and then sweep down. And then if you want to throw it up, you pull down and move forward uh, just like that. Uh, they also have this little button here. Uh, and you can actually take the barrel out. So let's just do that right now. So throw this back. Okay. And then you push this down 
and over and out pops the barrel. So super easy. Uh, I don't know how practical this would be, you know, other than if you're an armorer, because you can easily swap out the barrel. This is their 16 inch barrel here, guys. Um, but you can swap in any other barrel and then put it in at a slight angle and then lock it in and boom, you are good to go. Uh, and then you have your side charging handle right there. Uh, what else? Moving back, um, let's flip it to the other side. Push bar charging handle here, guys. So white is safe and red. I don't know if you can see red is fire. And then, yeah, ejection port here. We've got the mag release button here, and then the, the butt pad is back here. All right, so let's approach this just like we always do, guys. I just want to go over the, the basics of this gun real quick. Um, but let's talk about the cons, in my opinion, pros, in my opinion, and then how I have this set up for me. All right, so let's talk about the cons. There are a few. Uh, so starting up top here, as you can see, this is an attachment for a uh, sling swivel, but the placement, in my opinion, is god awful. And you can see why. The sling gets right in the way of the charging handle. And uh, before I found a piece, uh, an adapter piece right here uh, from a company that we're going to get to uh, why uh, in a little bit when I talk about how I have this set up for me. Um, until I found this, I was running it like this and this sling was constantly getting in my way of the charging handle. Um, so that was a big problem. And for how state of the art this gun was, I don't know how that made it through testing and production um, because that is just a piss poor uh, position in my opinion. So that's a con for sure. I hated that, but there are options out there for aftermarket support. So it's not that terrible. Uh, moving back, guys, it's a bullpup. So the trigger is going to be ugh, uh, <laughs> very long take up. Um, uh, pretty heavy trigger pull and then an obnoxious reset and the whole thing is just kind of mushy. Uh, again, I did do something to fix that and improve that, which we will get, um, you know, to in a few minutes. But the trigger out the gate, guys, not good. Uh, what else? Uh, I would say the mag release is okay, but it's not great. I don't love the angle. I, in my opinion, the angle is just a little bit too steep. I wish they would have cut that angle just a little bit, uh, be, just because there are sometimes just with, I don't know if it's my hands or maybe I haven't practiced enough, but sometimes I feel like I can't push this enough uh, until I, you know, I, or I have to push it pretty far before I actually release the mag. Um, so I don't know if it's the mag release itself or maybe just the ergos or my ergos, uh, but it's not, the, the mag release is not super smooth. Again, that might just come down to training, but there there is aftermarket stuff. I just haven't done anything. I think Corvus Defensio, uh, a company, does make a more flared magwell. I think the angle might be slightly different as well. I heard it's good. I haven't gotten it. Corvus Defensio, their stuff is a lot of times out of stock, and it's very expensive. Uh, for, for what the, the material is. So um, I have not tried that out. If you guys have tried that out, please let me know. Uh, maybe I'll invest in it in the future. Other than that, uh, oh, one other thing, the push bar safety. It's a push bar safety. Uh, it's okay. But if I'm running it on safe and I've got my finger off the trigger, the bottom edge here is very sharp. Uh, and so a lot of times I if I'm just running no gloves, it digs into my finger pretty easily and you can see it's already, well, you probably can't see, but it's already marking up my finger um, just for keeping it there a couple seconds. So I don't want to shave this down because it's probably going to affect the integrity um, of this moving within the unit itself. So I haven't touched it, but be aware of that, guys, that that bottom corner edge there does not feel good. Okay, uh, anything else? Let's see. There could be more rail space on here. I have a pretty minimalistic setup. I have a flashlight and then I've got um, an optic here uh, with a little magnifier. We'll get into that. But for those of you guys that do like to run pecs on everything or uh, like to have a lot of rail space for a lot of accessories, I get that. You're gonna have to buy some aftermarket stuff for this. They do have aftermarket rails that would extend out here. 
Uh, I think most of them are M-lock rails, which will give you a lot more space. You will lose this, though. You'll have to get rid of this. Um, and I, I'm not actually sure how much uh, those conversion kits and those rails cost. Uh, but they will give you a lot more space. So I guess that is a con. It doesn't really affect me, but I think overall we're, we're getting more and more accessories on our guns or we like to have more and more accessories on our guns. And unfortunately, this gun doesn't really offer much. There's a six uh, little pick slot here and then a 16 up top here. Um, and, you know, if I wanted to run, you know, I've got my pressure pad here, but if I wanted to run a laser on this or something else, I couldn't. Uh, there's just no space. So again, I've said it, this phrase a million times, but be aware of that. Okay, those I think are the cons, uh, in my opinion. Now let's talk about the pros. So we talked about this compensator slash flash hider. I really like it. Um, it works really well, I found. Uh, for a 5.56, five, I think the ports are big enough where it can help you know, uh, let those gases escape and help you get back on the target a little bit quicker. So I have not touched this. Uh, there might be more effective muzzle devices out there, but this one seems to be working well for me. Um, it's not an adapter for a suppressor. So if I do want to eventually suppress this, which I might, I am going to have to take this off. Um, but I probably will stick with some sort of um, flash hider slash compensator, probably go with the Surefire War Comp uh, that's a great muzzle device, and it's probably going to do something very similar uh, that this does. But I do really like that. Um, moving back here, I do like this handle. Uh, so if I want to run a C-clamp, I can run a C-clamp. All right, and I can get that out of the way, and it's just fine, and I can actuate my flashlight here. Um, so the C-clamp is actually pretty comfortable, but if I want to run and gun, this actually is a very comfortable vertical grip here guys and I really like it a lot and and it's just one less thing for you to buy and if you're you know with most vertical grips one you have to buy it and two it's always sticking out where this one you can fold up and it's it's a little bit more flush so I do really like that a lot um it's for whatever reason it's one of the one of my most you know uh, favorite parts about this gun uh which might be a little pathetic but I do really like that a lot uh, what else? Uh, moving back, uh, the overall construction is really good. I mean, it's a Steyr AUG, um, so the construction is really good. It's pretty easy to take apart. Um, there's this butt pad back here that you push in and you can, you know, get, get back to the trigger group and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty easy to take apart, uh, considering, um, what else? The, the, the Magwell is not really flared, um, which can be a con, but, um, I don't really have a problem ever reloading this. So it's not really a problem to me. Uh, what else? What else? The charging handle's good here, guys. Um, so, you know, it sticks out a little bit, but it can be flush. If you want, it can be pressed in. It's just spring loaded. So you can pull it back. And it's very easy to get uh, purchase on that every single time. So, so there's that. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about how I have this set up. Okay. So let's talk about uh, what I did components wise. So I do have a flex swivel adapter here. This is from Gearhead Works. And this replaced uh, a just kind of a, a push through bar that helps hold uh, the innards of this gun together. But the, the, the piece that this replaced was plastic. This piece is aluminum. So already it's more durable. And again, it seconds as a sling swivel attachment, which is super nice. And it takes the sling out of the way up here. And uh, I really like that a lot. And it was actually really easy to install. Um, I believe they have a video on their website and it's it's very easy to install and it's a nice little piece of equipment. So, uh, you know, if you have a Steyr AUG, I would highly recommend looking into Gearhead Works. I think it's called the Flex Sling Swivel. So that's good. Uh, going to the trigger, I that was one of the first things that I, I had to fix just because it was awful. I went to... Rat works. So we have Gearhead works, and then we have Rat works. And with Rat works, they have a trigger sear. 
So the trigger is still the same. This is still a stock trigger, um, but the trigger sear I got from Ratworks and that really, really cleans up the overall trigger pull. So if we go here, so before I would say, again, it was probably seven or eight pound trigger pull and it was a very long, uh, very long take up and then a very mushy reset. So let's go here. So here's the trigger pull here. So we're, oh, we're pulling in here. That's it. So I moved about two millimeters. I would say it's still about a five and a half pound trigger pull, but it's definitely lighter. And then if we let it up here, about another one to two millimeters, guys. So then again, here's the pull. I'm gonna get in real close. Here's the pull. Boom, right there. And then the reset. Super, super nice. So that is a must upgrade, guys. If you have a Steyr AUG, if you were to upgrade anything, go to um, uh, Ratworks and get their trigger sear. Again, pretty easy install. Uh, not the easiest, but I was able to do it, and I'm an idiot. So, um, so it can't be that bad if I can do it. But I'm telling you guys, I'd say it, it, it reduces the take up by 50%, and it probably reduces the reset by like 75%, and then it might take a pound or so off the trigger pull. So just massive, massive upgrade, guys. Highly recommend it. Uh, can't rave about it enough. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, okay, so I do have a, a stream light flashlight here. Uh, this is their ProTac. It's a thousand lumens, and I just have it on a pick mount here, and then I have the pressure pad up top here. So regardless of whether the vertical grip is down or up, I can still effectively run a C-clamp, and I can get that light going right there, which I do run uh, a C-clamp a decent amount of time. Or if not, I can just run down here or and then I can easily swap back up to the pressure pad. I do have an EOTech optic here with a G33 magnifier behind it. Um, so from the top view here, guys. So here's the top view and it's right side folding because I'm a right-handed shooter. Uh, I love this setup. This setup was on another rifle, but I ended up putting a Night Force and some other stuff on that one, and I came to this. I love this setup on this gun, guys. Uh, this gun is pretty short with an overall length of uh, 28 inches, even though it's a full 16-inch barrel. Uh, but because it's so short, this gun could be very good for CQB, so I thought I would go with more of a CQB-friendly optic setup here with the um, holographic, and then the 3X scope. So with this 3X, guys, I can still shoot out to like 300 yards pretty accurately. Um, but again, because it's more of a compact package, I thought I'd go with more of the CQB setup, and I love it on this gun, guys. Uh, I had it on my full-size AR, like I said. I think it's way, I think it's suited way better for this gun, just, just with how I have it set up and, and the overall length of this gun. I think it's perfect. Uh... Okay, that's probably about it. I have a Ferro Concepts Slingster here. You guys, if, you, if you've been following me for a while, you guys know I really like the Ferro Concepts Slingster. Really great stuff. This is just their black. Um, I thought with everything else, I, I would go with black. Um, but yeah, I really like it. And then a Ranger Band to keep everything in place. If you guys don't know about Ranger Bands, get to know about Ranger Bands. They're going to turn into your best friend. Uh, I think that's probably about it. Again, I wanted to revisit this. There's a couple other guns, my, my G19 and then also my P10C uh, that I'm probably going to do with this overhead view with the better lighting and talk about that. Uh, but this is the Steyr AUG, guys, again. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you like this video, uh, please consider subscribing. Share this video with anybody who you find might like it. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.